Welcome to Prelude to a Good Goodbye. I'm Gail Rubin, the doyen of death, coming to you from my parents' house here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, we have Karen Hyatt with Estate Pros. Glad to have you with us, Karen. Thank you, Gail. It's good to be here. Well, you know, this is a situation where I have taught about preparing for end-of-life issues for years. But it's always been focused on the funeral planning and the estate planning. And here we are in a fully furnished house. My parents live in Florida, and they are likely going to die in Florida. Uh -huh. We just put them in an assisted living place. And now I am tasked with <laughs> dealing with the contents of this house and selling the house. And I think this is something that most people don't think about when they think about planning for end of life. So what do you do with estate pros mm -hmm. that helps people to deal with this situation mm -hmm. in life? Well, Gail, thanks for having me here today. As you know, in estate pros, we really assist families in four primary areas. The estate work, meaning that's usually initiated when someone dies, someone's partner or parent or child, God forbid, um, and the home and the contents need to be handled or distributed. And then we do an awful lot of downsizing, as in this case, downsizing your parents' second home that they've used in Albuquerque to now their primary residence, much smaller space in Florida. And then we do a lot of senior moves. You've already taken care of that, or your parents did, because they moved like a year ago to Florida, which is what they normally did in the winter. Or, yes, they would go back and forth. They uh -huh. actually had complete house in Florida. Right. And, and now they've uh, done a downsizing uh -huh. of the essentials to be in their apartment in this assisted yes. living place. And admittedly, that's a much smaller reduced living space. And mm -hmm. so that impacts kitchenware, clothing, furniture, memorabilia, all of that. Um, we do senior moves, so if you had not been here, we could have assisted your parents if they were not capable of it. We could have helped them literally make the move uh, for this last time to Florida. And then we also, in the last three to five years, have been called upon mainly by professionals, meaning attorneys and bankers, to go into a home and do a complete inventory of everything that's in the home. Sometimes the banker or... Um, attorney sense that there may be conflict in the family, you know, down the road, and so they like to have what I call a baseline inventory. Uh, and sometimes we're called upon to do a lot of inventories, even in homes where really there's not that much of monetary value in the family. But, for instance, there may be a whole gun collection that comes from great-grandfathers, you know, from the 1800s, and they know that the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are all going to want dibs on those things. So we do an awful lot of inventories in preparation for the time when we may need to distribute things. So to jump to your situation, which is not uncommon at all, um, we can um, assist you. You've already taken me through the home. And we can assist you in packing and shipping things to each of your brothers, your parents, and getting across town to your home. Um, and that may, be, may include family photos, scrapbooks, uh, memorabilia. For instance, you've pointed out in this home some incredible sailing ships that your parents had collected, I think you said, on a trip or several trips to Mexico. Yes. And one of your brothers really wants those, which is understandable. We can get those packed professionally so that they arrive in the same shape that they leave the house. And also there's always a lot of paperwork. Since your parents utilize this home as a full-time half-year home and their Florida home as the other half of the year, Obviously, there's going to be a lot of paperwork in this home, as we noticed in the office, that includes financials, medical, legal papers, not necessarily in this home, but sometimes we're specifically asked by a banker or an attorney 
look for the car title. You know, they need to sell cars, but they haven't laid their hands on the car title yet. Mm -hmm. And we find those in the oddest places, not necessarily <laughs> always um, filed appropriately. Um, sometimes we're asked to find safe deposit keys. Um, we have actually been charged with finding uh, both divorce papers and adoption papers. A lot of times those particular papers come into play when they're trying to handle the will appropriately if someone has died. Um, and sometimes based on the person's, whether it's like your parents who are still living but no longer involved in professions, or if they had died, sometimes we're tasked with finding papers that were specific either to their profession or their hobby. For instance, AKA papers to certain dog breeds. We've, we've handled the homes of dog breeders. Oh. And the people who had purchased through the years dogs from those particular people uh, may need that paperwork. Maybe they've lost their own. You know, it's mm -hmm. just fascinating some of the things we're asked to find. So that's kind of an overview. Mm -hmm. What do you do with things like yearbooks? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of my dad's University of Maryland yearbook and oh my god I have high school yearbooks for myself. It's like right. they're, it, it seems a shame to throw those out mm -hmm. but I don't know what could be done with something right. like that. Well, and this is not specifically in the area of service that we offer, but you and I both know there are amazing professionals across the country who actually handle historical photos. And usually um, they're members of something, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce, meaning mislabel this, but it's something like the American Historical Society. It's not quite that easy. <laughs> uh, but they usually are members of that. And they handle family photographs, books like yearbooks, so that they can get into a memorable package for the family members who are still living. Mm -hmm. um, so I often refer families to those kind of professionals. And you and I happen to know one in common, mm -hmm. Marty <laughs> McNabb, who lives in Vermont. Uh, she's just extraordinary at this. Um, but she does that for full-time professional work. Cool. And, you know, one of the things that strikes me being here in my parents' home is how many family photos yes. there are. Yes. And um, fortunately, I just talked to my youngest brother who said, I'll take all those family photos and we'll make a wall of honor oh, for nice. them. So I'm glad they will get a good home. Yes. And uh, But that's a way of looking at my family that I hadn't really fully appreciated mm -hmm. until this point. Mm -hmm. That family meant so much, means so much to my parents. Yes. And it was your nuclear family. You know, it was the family you were born into. Let me tell you an, an example. Uh, before I drove to Albuquerque this morning, I met our company administrator at a storage unit. It's one of our company's safe units where we store family memorabilia for clients and or really valuable art because sometimes the family can't decide immediately where certain things need to go. Well, to give you an example, out of an estate that we've been working on for four and a half years. Yes, <laughs> obviously not full time, uh, but it involves two generations of decedents and uh, an aunt who lives in the Midwest and two young adult children. And when I say young adult children, I mean they're both in their 20s, but they are the children of the most recent decedents. Mm -hmm. Um, we have stored for them 18 boxes of banker's boxes oh, of family photos, which come from three generations. And so I met our company administrator there just this morning because the family is now ready for us to digitize all of those photos at quite some expense because as you know it's like a walk down memory lane it's not just photos 
that you might take today. Certainly they're not, you know, on your iPhone. Right. Um, but these are Polaroids, they're slides, Kodachrome. I mean, these are words, ancient history to us now. Yeah. And then back to the 40s and some beyond before that, of black and white, beautiful historical photos, and the three primary family members, the two children and this aunt, uh, want copies of all of that. So we've been asked to make, transfer it to digital in three copies. And so each family member will get digital copies of all of that history, photographic history. And some of them are like, Old Faithful at Yellowstone. I mean, you know, we all have those yeah. <laughs> kind that we should have deep sixed a long time ago. Um, and then some of us will be tasked with going in and separating all the originals and d giving them to each family member appropriately. Wow. So it can really become overwhelming. And if the family members aren't necessarily communicating very well, and that's the case in this family, uh, then neutral parties need to do that kind of separation and divide and shipping. Yeah. So it can get pretty complex and costly yeah. to ship those off to have them digitized. Yeah. If you want to learn more about Karen <laughs> Hyatt and Estate Pros, go to their website, estateprosnm.com. Thank you. And um, check it out. <laughs> and just bear in mind, the funeral is not the end, it's the beginning of the end, and it starts before somebody dies with their downsizing their estate. So, you know, think about that for your own household, for your parents, whatever you might be dealing with, and uh, I hope we'll be able to bring you some, some more videos giving you food for thought about a prelude to a good goodbye.